He doesn't take any shortcuts. It's just a, it's an art. I mean, there's a fine line between art and craft. Being a professional, sometimes you have to take on work. So you do it, well, that's a craft. But when you invent something, which, you know, a lot of the times Fane does, that's an art. Some of the stuff he does, you, you'll never see it anywhere. So that's what makes it special. It's a three-layered piece, uh, two hollow dish forms and a, and a centerpiece. Uh, and it's all based on actually the phases of the moon. And what I'd done was I ended up painting a, a design on the inside of the stone. So you can see there's a bit of cool fi fi coming through. And, and this is that whole fascination with, um, with light. And you know, just light passing through a, an empty space. So on one side we have this, and then when you flip it over, it becomes this. Right. I had a couple of cousins that became chefs. Dad sort of thought a uh, diesel mechanic could be a good good option, but you know, cars didn't interest me. I always had a fascination with Māori art. I thought you know, it might be a good hobby to have, and then go and get a real job. I didn't know that I'd be still carving today, but it's a way of life. It's years of. Um, just really strict disciplines. You know, a lot of people don't really appreciate the amount of time, the effort that, that actually goes into getting to where we are. What would strike me first is, oh, here's actually somebody coming from the carving school, and then I have a closer look. Oh, that's fame, only he would do that. We were all taught sort of pretty basic, you know, the generalised patterns, many different styles of patterns, you know, tribal styles. Um, but Fane kind of plays with them a bit, um, mixes them up a bit. I've always admired his cleanness, his, his, his um, discipline with his work, you know, and how he um, can actually make it more contemporary. If it's a story about Maui and so they might have a bird or a fish hook or something down there, you'll see that old, you know, 200 year old traditional style in there, then you'll see a little bit of contemporary and he, he marries them in really well. Oh, a stiff competition, that guy, you know. <laughs> There's a point of time when carving was becoming very extinct and very rare, hence Parliament, you know, setting up the New Zealand Maori Arts and Crafts Institute. You know, it was a government push thing just to revive the Māori arts. In terms of mentoring, it's um, vital. Becoming more and more so even now, even within our tribe. And um, we're talking more about traditional arts because when we looked at um, our weavers and our carvers within our tribe, mm, there's not many. You know, you, you could die tomorrow. And you've done this for what reason? You're pretty greedy to take it to the grave. So yeah, there is a time to, to pass on, I suppose. It's a far no thing. I just do what I can, help out around the place. I really like animals. I'm an animal person, so I don't mind tending to all the animals. Works great for me. Works really well in my favour. Fane has taken the responsibility of nurturing um, Caleb, and, and it's, it's his nephew, it's his family. So what he's really doing is he's cementing that, that tradition in his family. And I don't, you know, that, that's honourable. It's an honourable thing to do. And I think that's what Fame and, and Caleb have found that relationship where they're good for, for each other. And especially when Caleb's so passionate about what, he, what he's doing. For me growing up, Fane was one of my idols. I mean, he's recognised as one of the modern masters. Now to be following in his footsteps, you know, it's kind of, 
it's really pleasing to me. And then you grab the um, vice grips and you hold the wheel and then tighten it from that side. I don't know if it, how easy it would be to, you know, getting bossed around by fame, um, but you know, um, I hope Caleb realises how precious that is. Is it slow enough? Yeah, are you pushing down hard or what? I don't know. What it's are you trying to make that hurt? Let's put your hand. Oh, put your hand back up. Don't move it. He's a, a very honest critic. And that's good too because it keeps me honest. He's about the art and he's about uplifting the art. He's not afraid to hack something up that you've done if he doesn't like it. There's a heartbreaking moment when you've spent a whole week doing a design on something and start again, boy. You know, I know where he's coming from. He's doing it to make me the best artist that I can be. When he's, when he's giving you grief and picking on you and teasing you, it's a... It's all in love, you know. This is all about talent. Everything about him is just a, a continuation of a journey. His journey. I'll do some design elements that aren't related to Caleb, but they related it to the person that he wants to be, i.e. carving forms, so carving designs. So it's, in, in a way, Caleb's got He's, he's a, a walking reference for himself as well. I actually use my skin as a reference when I'm drawing, eh? And he'd be dumb not to. He's a proud South Islander, he's a proud West Coaster, so you can see that in his work. You know, he likes working with Pono and Wood, somebody he put them together. I think I always had a, a bit of a desire to to carve Pounamu. You know, I used to walk up the river with my dad, with my mum, my aunties. That's just what we done. My my thing's a lot different to other carvers. I look at a stone and I think, you know, can I get a Meri Pounamu out of it? And then if I can't get a Meri Pounamu, man, I want to do a tiki. The biggest thing for me was understanding form. A lot of people think it's such a simple form to to execute, and it's, it's quite the opposite. Yeah, on a bit of a mission, I want to do a series of tiki, make them all different. 150 was the target. I really love the purity of the stone, even when it's unflawed. But to me, something that's got a little bit of character, you know, i.e. a bit of crust coming through, I think it just adds something different to the, to the form. But, but to me, I, I think it's the crust I like. Some people learn to carve a tiki and they think that's it. And that's the tiki they carve all here for the rest of their life. Yeah, they might become good at it, but what are they doing? They just, that's, that's, that's a craftsman. I suppose that's the difference between a craftsman and trying to be an artist. Although it's not quite finished, is I've inverted the fingers. And one of the reasons is when the light actually goes through, it has a different reveal. The opinion of others is they'll pick up a, a carved piece and the first thing you hear out of a lot of their mouths is, oh, what a glorious piece of stone. Yes, the stone is attractive, but I want them to pick it up because they actually like the piece. This is your manaya form. So we've got a head, a body, and a leg. This acts as an arm as well. It took me 20 years for everything to click. It was that slow. I think it's quite fast. You know, our influences today aren't so much from the school, but from our environment, from our whakapapa, from the, from the land. When, when I carve, so it's not just me, it's, it's my affiliations. It's the influences around me. The kaupapa that I've chosen. I'm doing Naitau, or I'm doing Mamoi, or 
Oh, not the upper, you know, it's, it's ours. Our fucking problem makes it ours. You can't get any more true to form than that. Him now.